Hello, and welcome to this video on the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is a chemical process that occurs around 154 degrees centigrade. This converts sugars and proteins into a new compound by combining them. Heat is not the sole means of producing the Maillard reaction, but it is the most commonly observed. This is also sometimes described as non-enzymatic browning. Brown, crusty, baked bread is nothing like the doughy mass it begins as. The transformation between the two states is more than just a case of applying heat. This process of going from one state to another is also not limited to just bread or related baked goods. Meat and vegetables also exhibit this reaction. Malt is just such a product, with darker malt being more converted than light malt. This creates a distinctive flavour and aroma. The Maillard reaction is so named after the chemist Louis Camille Maillard. He discovered this whilst trying to reproduce biological protein synthesis which is something we now have a far better understanding of. The Maillard reaction is universal because it relies on two common ingredients, sugar and amino acids. Specifically, we need reducing sugars, which have a free aldehyde or ketone group. Fortunately, all monosaccharides are reducing, as are some dye and oligosaccharides. The amino acids are sourced from protein chains, where they are the constituting subunits. In muscle, such as steak or chicken, the amino acids from the proteins and the most abundant biologically active sugar, glucose, form the reagents for the Maillard reaction. Maillard reactions do not rely on enzymes, which is an important consideration. It is fundamentally a chemically favoured gradient of reactions. You can shift the gradient by adding environmental conditioners such as pH adjustment. Chemically, this process involves a reductive reaction. Reductive reactions gain an electron, generally from hydrogen, and this creates a bond with another component. This is seen in the glucose metabolism pathway. In the Maillard reaction, it involves the amino acid gaining the electron, nominally from a hydrogen ion. This creates a favourable site for the sugar to break a double bond. When this double bond breaks, it forms a bond with a protein rather than the sugar reforming into its original state. This new bond leads to a new compound. A good example of this is acrylamide, which forms when roasting coffee beans. Asparagine, the amino acid, is converted through a series of reactions into 3-aminopropyoamide. This reacts with carbonyl to form acrylamide. Acrylamide relates to the flavour of roasted coffee beans particularly, and is a known but comparatively safe carcinogen. Details on that can be found in the top right. Alternative means of facilitating the Maillard reaction exist. The first of these is the previously mentioned pH balance. By shifting the pH of the solution, particularly with your ingredients, you can change how likely the loss of the reducing sugar electron is. There is a common and very basic ingredient found in most kitchens baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, which can be used to exemplify this. It is commonly used in conjunction with an acid to become a leavening agent, something that gives body to bread and other baked goods. What it also does is increase the pH of a foodstuff when it is added. This increase in pH increases the rate at which the Maillard reaction occurs. Baking soda is a weak base, and can sometimes be added to water, such as when brewing. One reason to add it to brewing water 
is the same reason you may choose to add it to baked goods. It increases the rate at which the Maillard reaction occurs. Secondary to that, it adds a pronounced nutty flavour as a consequence of that same reaction. Another method available to you is the application of heat. Higher temperatures increase the differential gradient of the chemical reaction and it results in a favouring situation for the Maillard reaction. In order for the Maillard reaction to occur, you need to get to a point over 100 degrees centigrade. And in the cases of frying, roasting and grilling, that's a relatively easy thing to do. If you can get to the 155 degrees centigrade needed for the Maillard reaction, you'll be sitting in the middle range of what is optimal, going as high as 175 or as low as 135 will still result in the Maillard reaction. What you will have a get is either a slight increase or a slight decrease. You want to maintain this higher temperature, if possible, for a short period of time when working with meat, but when working with vegetables and similar, you may wish to go for a longer period of time to ensure that throughout the entire piece of food you are working with, the reaction occurs. This would generally ruin meat but in the case of a vegetable, it may make it sweeter. In the case of malt, it would substantially alter the flavour profile, and in many cases this may be more desirable. However, getting to this temperature is difficult. In most foodstuffs, there is a substantial amount of water, and that moisture prevents the food from getting above 100 degrees centigrade, the temperature at which water boils. You can solve this through adding less water or boiling off the liquid. The problem is that once it's gone, it's generally gone for good. By removing it, you can increase the rate at which the Maillard reaction occurs up to a point. The reason for that caveat is that some water, or at least fluid, is required for the reagents to move around within the foodstuff. If there is too little, there will be no movement, therefore no reaction. Therefore, if food or similar gets too dry, you will slow down the reaction. If it is too wet, you will not be able to get to the right heat. There is no universal rule for how much moisture to have within a foodstuff, and therefore trial and error is the only solution. There is an interesting exception to both this rule and the one for heat. The Maillard reaction occurs at very low temperatures, particularly in vintage champagne, where the autolyzed yeast, which was full of protein and made of much protein, breaks up and is released into the environment. The sugar from the champagne, which has not yet been digested and fermented, reacts with this protein mess to form the Maillard products. This yields a characteristic flavor profile unique to champagne based upon where it was aged, what grapes were used, and what yeast was used. This can work to as low as 9 to 12 degrees centigrade year-round, which means you do not require the 155 degrees recommended. Because of the chemical gradient and the way it is favoured within the wine barrel for champagne, the Maillard reaction is an interesting and somewhat quirky occurrence within chemistry biochemistry, and within cooking. Knowing what it is, to a certain extent, and understanding why it works is useful. In many cases, people have been applying the knowledge of the Maillard reaction without knowing what it is, only that it works. For example, putting milk or egg on a roasted or baked product results in a glaze that darkens the top of the foodstuff. This is the Maillard reaction in effect, but you may not know it by that name. Therefore, you'll see there are many examples in real life and in practical life where this little and somewhat interesting chemical reaction occurs. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it useful, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.